again from Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing full accounting and profit management software for the professional home builder. This is the continuation in a series of videos about purging your accounting database when it's gotten quite large and has quite a few years of data in it and you'd like to purge it. Uh, video 1 and 2 talked about what will happen when you do a purge and that you shouldn't be worried about it because there will be a data file copy right away before you do the purge and I've written very good code to get your balances forward and to move all job costs and revenues into a historical table that would, you can access from your current data file after the purge and even return job cost records to your database that, for ones that might have been in progress as of your cutoff date and that you can also keep access to the data file from before the purge um, and have that available. And I'm going to show all of that a little bit here. But now we um, have talked about going to utilities, clicking the button for purge accounting data. In the first video we read all of this stuff and talked about it. In the second video I showed you how, um, first of all, our cutoff date is going to be 093013 because the fiscal year end for this company is September 30th. Then I talked about um, that step two here before doing the purge is that you print out all of these reports before the purge because um, what you're going to need to do after the purge is go back and print them again um, to see if they haven't changed, make sure they haven't changed since before the purge. Now I have down here um, a whole bunch of stuff that I printed out beforehand. You can see here's a trial balance. Um, as of our purge date before the purge. And so, of course, you would want the trial balance after the purge to be the same, and also a trial balance as of today, a list of unpaid payables, um, and the vendors and what the balance was there. And you want that as of 930 to also be the same of open accounts payable then that might have gotten paid in the next year or afterwards that you've already paid, but they're open as of that day. Same with open accounts receivable and a trial balance with job sales. We won't spend a lot of time popping those up. Um, you should just do them and then um, do them again after the purge to make sure they don't look any different really. Uh, so we're ready. We went through in the second video that if you click this button, CHS is going to do some checking to make sure your books are sort of all good and have been closed as of the date you're using them and so on. So if you watch the previous video, you'll see that. So we've taken care of that, taken care of alerts from CHS about things we needed to take care of, and our books should be ready to purge now. So what I'm going to do is click the button below to update the records. And I'll probably pause this because it can take several moments because remember this is going through 80,000 records, getting um, and summing up balance forwards, checking for open and payables, accounts receivable, um, that kind of thing. So I'll go ahead and let it get started. I'll answer the message, yes, I do want to run the purge, and that message will run and will go away when um, it's done. I'll pause this for a moment. Okay, it has completed its purge. I think it actually did it in less than a couple, three minutes, and took care of doing everything. So then the next message we get is that the current file has been copied to an archive file and the accounting purge is done. Job costs and revenues up to the cutoff date have been moved to the historical table. You can open the historical table under utilities and return records for a job to the accounting database as prior period entries that will, will appear on job costs and revenue reports. It is strongly suggested that you print the list of jobs that have records in the historical table and then delete any budgets for the jobs that you do not plan to restore. Print a second copy of the reports in step two to compare them, like I said. And then if you would like CHS to store, maintain, and provide access to the archived copy of your data file before the purge, click the button below to send an email message to CHS requesting this. Um, and it says that the fee for providing access to and maintaining the additional data file will be 30 per month. And, and that would calculate whenever you do your next invoice for the, for the months after that. So, 
Um, you would click this if you wanted to have access to it. We would get an email saying that you do want to have access to it. We would go make that um, data file that's been copied active for you to have access. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute. I'm not going to click it because I'm on my local machine and email acts funny. But you should click that if you want to have access or close do not request access. Um, it is telling me, it also sends an email to us to tell us that you just did that. <laughs> um, that and that was a message about how it couldn't really send the email. Because I'm, on, I'm not actually out on the server that has the email capabilities. So what you need to do is, um, let's take an example of our accounts payable aging detail that we printed before the purge, 196.164.27. So let's print one after this purge and make sure that it still matches. 164.27, it does. Um, let's do a trial balance as of the cutoff date. And we can scroll down, look at various things. And look at this one that we printed before the purge. Let me make it kind of smaller. Um, let's scroll down on it. Where did I scroll to? Um, I've already actually checked this stuff, and so it's okay, but um, let me get this thing moved over here a little bit, and let's look at this. Let's get over here, and you can see long-term liability, 158, 983. You can see the numbers um, being basically the same. You should study every one of them. Make sure that they're the same. This is the one we printed before which you should have in a pile printed out, actually. And then this is the one we're printing after the purge. So you can kind of get the idea of doing all of that. Print all these again. Check them with the ones you printed first. If something's really, really wrong, call us up, and we will put back the copy of the data file before the purge. And we'll also help you troubleshoot what's going on with that. Um, they should match. Um, Try to be very, very careful. It was intense programming to do all of that. But I'm an accountant and I applied my stuff to it. The other thing it suggests that you should also click this to print a list of jobs that now have records in the historical table. Um, and you might take a look at that. Some of them might be quite old. Um, they have records in the historical table. Um, you might want to go ahead and get rid of budgets for those change orders purchase orders maybe, et cetera, to also help clean up some other tables. This purge does not affect your um, purchase orders, change orders, job budgets. It's an accounting purge that we just did. But there might be other things um, using this list. You might say they're so old I don't even have current stuff in there. So let's close this. Now what I'd like to show you is a few things. First of all, there is now records in the historical table that are not in your accounting table. And um, just job costs and job revenues type, type records. There's 10,000 of them it found. And they're over here so that you could do searches, look up various uh, vendors various for, for various jobs over here, and still look at a whole lot of those records. They're just kept here. If you want to clean this out, you can click to select a job to delete all the records um, that are in the historical table if you wanted. But the main thing you could do, maybe on the date you chose, like we did September 30th, um, it got some records from before that date and put them here in the historical table. And you decide, I, I wish those records were back in my main accounting table because that was an ongoing job. Um, there's a tool here and I'm going to use it in a minute, but let's go home and let's go to jobs and let's open our jobs list for a minute. I'd like to show you something. Now it's showing you um, in historical it has three exclamation points um, and if you click on them it's going to let you know that there are records in the historical table uh, for this job now and that you could review them, but if needed, you can open and, and restore these records. So it, they're held there, so you can go look up stuff. But if you'd like to put them back in your main accounting database, you could. Let's take a look and see what jobs we still have marked as active. Let's see if any of these 
have data in historical, um, what you can do is you can look at used for a certain job and you'll see that there's button job revenues in historical table. But there's ones here that are not in your accounting. They are part of your accounting balances forward for that job. But the detail um, records behind the balance forwards are not there. And there's actual job costs in the table. But let's see if we're having current activity after September 30th by looking at actual job costs for that. And just let those go ahead and get open for a minute. Now you can see that, and it's trying to alert you, there's other costs in the historical table with these three exclamation points. Um, you can see we do have quite a little, lot of activity that happened in October, December 2013. So what is that job code? It's uh, DM119D. So let's decide we're going to put stuff for it back in um, the accounting database. So that was DM. 119D, and it says click to automatically restore. Select a job for restoring. So we're going to restore the records just for that job. Now what you should do after you do something like that is you should probably use your browser's refresh and just get everything refreshed um, because a lot of this where it reads whether there's stuff in historical happens as this thing reopens itself basically. So now if I do jobs and jobs list and then let's just ask for those active jobs again to make it easier. Um, notice that the DM119D no longer has three exclamation points and if you do used then you take a look at the actual job costs they are, also, they are going to include costs that you just restored to the accounting database. And um, just a minute, I'm trying to remember what this has here actually. Notice this doc ID says historical um, right there. That basically means CHS pulled it back in but did mark it as one that had been in the, in the, in the historical table. You can see that it's a date on 9-30-2013 or before, but it sort of um, assigned its own little doc ID to pull those back in, so it might not be the original invoice number, but it will get all the rest of the information, the right cost codes, um, that kind of thing by restoring it to your accounting database. They come in as what is called prior period entries which means um, they're especially designed not to mess with the balance forwards as of 9-30-2016. But that's how you can restore some of the costs um, for particular jobs if you like um, after you've had the purge. Um, but that's about all it is, is it's just taking your balances, uh, all your GL balances, um, and putting, re-putting them in as of the purge date that you select and then removing all the records before it, although it grabs hold before it purges of all the job costs and revenue records and puts them in that historical table so that you can restore some of them or use that historical table to look up stuff. And um, you can have access to your archive database. Um, I'm going to pause for a minute and um, log off and then show you something as I come in about how I now have access to the historical one. So I'll pause one second. Okay, I've logged off and then I've logged back in and you know CHS for me has given me also access now instead of just to my one company, my archived one and if I click to open that one, you'll be able to see that when you open it, first of all you'll see the title up here has the word archive but that CHS will detect that this is an archived data file. This is just a, your, your data file exactly as it was um, before the purge. Um, and it's saying, warning, this is an archived data file and no changes should be made in this file. You should just use this file to look up things, um, you know, that kind of thing, study on things. Um, don't suddenly accidentally start entering bills here. Please pay attention to this. 
But you should know it when you click on it to open it. You should be able to tell yourself, yes, it's archived. I'm just opening it so I can go look up a bunch of stuff. So that's how that looks. Um, I also did want to do one other thing. Um, I'm going to leave this page and let me pause for one more moment. Okay, after I paused, I, well, I logged off of that one and came back to the um, our current data file, which we have purged. And what I'd like to show you is under Accounting Financials, um, we had opened the Accounting Database General Ledgers in our very first video to say that there was, so we could show how there was 80-some thousand records, but we also talked about the uh, minimum GL date was in 2004. This shows the minimum GL date of 0320. 2006, even though we purged 930, that was because there were some old invoices and accounts payable dated with that and that were not paid. We're still in the open accounts payable for this builder um, and they are put back in by CHS with their original date as prior period entries. Um, so there will be some entries farther back if they're entries that you've either restored from the historical or were open accounts payable, etc., as of the purge date. Um, those prior period entries are designed not to mess the balances forward as of 9.30. But I wanted to click this Open Full Accounting Database, Transactions. Um, it takes a moment to gather the records, but I can tell you that the, mom you know, the moments for this full database just were a whole lot less than when I had 87,000 records. My purge left me with only 6,878 records rather than all the 10 years of records that were before. You can see right away going on here on September 30th, um, and then there's later entries happening. But um, that we've got a lot of entries as of September 30th, updated balance forward, updated balance forward. Um, some of the stuff had entries, but they totaled to zero, so it still did an updated balance forward. Um, so you can see accounts payable. It was doing some updated balance forwards things. I mean, pinnacle checking, I mean, the balance forward as of that date, things like that. But you can see how much less our database got, how much less time it will end up taking to comb through um, and open various windows just because we have so many less accounting records. And again, like I say, um, there's uh, tools over here under jobs and all jobs where you can list and see all your budgets. There's actually tools. Um, notice these jobs are closed. Um, there's a tool up here to de delete batch of budgets. You can delete budgets for jobs closed through a certain day. Um, it can be good to go ahead and get rid of all the records and all the old, old budgets. Maybe you don't need them anymore. So when CHS is trying to combine budgets and budgets and then actual costs, it doesn't have to comb through as many records to get the information you need. So there's some things, other things you can clean up to help with speed. I hope this all helped, and if you have any questions um, before you do a purge or after you do a purge, please feel free to call. Thank you for watching.